Hello, my name is Ryan Cummings. Today I will tell, be telling you about the laser communication relay. My advisor for this project is Dr. Sela Farouk. The first semester tasks for this project include the optical receiver. This module utilizes photodiodes in a differential configuration. The optical transmitter. This module utilizes a laser diode in transmitting the near-infrared spectrum. Uh, signal demodulation uh, for amplitude modulation. Uh, this is going to be performed using an envelope detector. Uh, frequency modulation. Uh, this will be performed using a phase lock loop. Uh, amplitude shift keying, uh, again an uh, envelope detector followed by a Schmidt trigger. Frequency shift keying, uh, phase lock loop and a Schmidt trigger and then uh, phase shift keying, which is currently still under investigation. Uh, signal coding and decoding. Um, for this we're going to be utilizing a convolutional coding as a channel coding method. Uh, for this I propose using a uh, programmable logic device to actually perform the coding and the decoding. Uh, solar panel power supply. Uh, for this uh, going to be utilizing low power components with a 1 watt goal and uh, circuit design and manufacturing. Uh, for this uh, the circuits will be laid out for high speed and signal fidelity. The system overview is presented on the right. Uh, 50 ohm interconnections will be utilized to connect the receivers and the transmitters. The processing section will utilize signal regeneration for frequency modulation, amplitude shift keying, frequency shift keying, and phase shift keying. An automatic gain control circuit will be required to regenerate amplitude modulated signals. Uh, high power, high speed devices are currently being utilized during the prototyping phase. The purpose of these devices is to allow for exploration of the capability of the system without running into device performance issues. Uh, low power devices will be utilized later in the design process. The receiver module is designed to be a differential photo detector. It utilizes photodiodes to provide a current signal. One photo detector cancels the ambient light. Uh, due to the lack of ambient light at 850 nanometers, this provides a very high fidelity signal as will be shown later on. Uh, photodiodes have good sensitivity due to the low impedance bias provided by the Zener diodes. 5.6 volts was chosen due to the low temperature coefficient to guarantee consistent performance during testing. The trans impedance amplifier will amplify the differential current. Uh, the proposed automatic gain circuit will be utilized at a future point to send consistent input signals to the processing module despite large dynamic range of the laser signal. The model of the photodiodes is shown on the left. The model was developed based off of the 5.6 volt bias from the data sheet. On the right is the low impedance bias. A constant current source and sink feed the Zener diodes to create a constant voltage. The current draw from the diodes through the bias is negligible compared to the currents through the zeners. Uh, the zener diodes have a low dynamic impedance as well, resulting in a low impedance return path to ground. The transmitter module must accurately recreate the command signal. The 850 nanometer laser diode provides signaling to the receiver. Again, infrared was chosen due to the low ambient levels. Rapid rise time is also desirable to ensure that signal distortions due to rise time are not of concern. This module was the first to be soldered to a perf board. On the breadboard, alligator clips and lead were required to position the laser diode to be in line of sight with the receiver. This resulted in a 9 nanosecond lag for the current signal. This coupled with the capacitive load of the laser diode resulted in oscillations which showed up as noise on the receiver. When the laser diode was placed on the breadboard, ringing was excessive due to high capacitance of the breadboard. As a result, prototyping was required to be moved to a perf board. The high speed op amp unfortunately does not have the required voltage range to drive the laser diode directly and sense the current as well. This forced the requirement to utilize a transistor to drive the laser diode. 
the bipolar junction transistor was chosen specifically because it is a current controlled current device. MOSFETs have additional capacitance which reduces the speed and raises ringing. Uh, current command is desired because of the linear relationship of current to optical power. A 300 MHz op amp is currently being utilized to force compliance of the laser diode to the commanded signal. To compensate for ringing of the current due to the capacitive load of the laser diode, a phase lead compensator was utilized. First, the period of the oscillations was measured when a step input is commanded. The frequency of the maximum phase compensation was then selected to match the frequency of the oscillations. This resulted in a crisp and clean edge with minimal overshoot when a step input is commanded. This is a picture of aligning the laser diode with the photodiode. Red lines are added to give perspective of the path of the infrared light. The photodiode on the right results in a positive output from the receiver. The photodiode on the left results in a negative output from the receiver. To align the laser diode, an infrared sensitive material shown in the picture will illuminate when the laser falls on it. A shallow angle results in optimal coupling. A small distance ensures consistent operation when applying different signals. The yellow trace is the current output from the laser diode. Note the sharp edge on the square wave. The blue trace is the selected output of the receiver. In this case, the result is the direct output of the receiver. For AM demodulation, a simple envelope detector is currently being utilized. A diode ring mixer would be considered a performance enhancement. Right now, the circuit only rectifies the positive peaks of the signal. The output will be taken after the DC blocking capacitor C2. This circuit can detect both negative and positive going photodiodes. The AM carrier is set to 1 MHz. This results in a clean demodulated signal. Notice the distortion on the negative half cycle of the output sine wave. The, the envelope detector also results in distortion of the square wave due to the DC blocking capacitor. Pulse width modulation has also proved to be an effective method of transmitting signals. By sending the PWN signal to the same envelope detector as the AM signal, we were able to recover the original signal. Pulse train frequency is set to 5 MHz with a duty cycle of 50%. The deviation is set to 25% which resulted in the cleanest sounding signal. As you can see, there is much distortion in both signals. Frequency demodulation requires a frequency to voltage conversion. Phase lock loop is one solution to this problem. The receiver output is fed into the phase frequency detector. The circuit creates a an air signal which is fed into a low pass filter. The voltage controlled oscillator has a nearly linear voltage to frequency transfer function. Due to the high gain of the phase frequency detector, the phase lock loop will lock onto the receiver's frequency. The input to the voltage controlled oscillator is buffered for use to minimize loading of the frequency detector. The range of the frequency lock and offset determines the frequency to voltage transfer function. This, a smaller lock range equates to larger voltage changes for smaller frequency deviations. This comes with a price as jitter of the source oscillator as well as the receiver oscillator directly equates to noise. A loopback function is utilized to test the transmission of digital signals user connects to a serial port utilizing a terminal program. The transmission line of the RS-232 is coupled to the transmitter to transmit the information. As the information is received, it is then limited back to TTL levels and then fed back to the terminal program. We can see examples of the transmitted capital E in two types of transmission scenarios. On the left is on-off keying and the right is frequency shift keying. The on-off keying method was found to be more reliable than the frequency shift keying with regards to signal recovery. The phase frequency detector has a minimum maximum voltage that it will output. This minimum voltage is right on the threshold of the low voltage of the RS-232 receiver. 
Projects performed in other courses led to completion of the source and error coding prior to the completion of the phase shift keying demodulation, which remains the only outstanding item that was planned to be completed during the fall semester. The spring semester tasks include completion of signal decoding, design of a solar power supply, circuit design, manufacture, assembly, and testing. In closing, the transmitter module is working well enough to continue moving forward with prototyping the remainder of the signal path. The receiver module is working well. A larger aperture photodiode is currently being utilized with no negative effects and allows for better alignment. So far, signal demodulation seems to be right on track with standard circuits utilized for demodulation. Future work includes configuring the relay for pass-through signals and then signal regeneration. Thank you for your time.